Okay, everybody, so what we've been doing, I've been working on getting us 3D printed nose cones. And you can see here's some example of four different examples. And what I've done is I've tuned up the dimensions to be exactly the right size so that when we print them out, uh, they're going to fit in our rocket. So you can see these four ro uh, nose cones that I've made, and they have some holes in the bottom so we can loop through the elastic cord. And everything's centered perfectly. We have to do these things pretty exactly if we want to get them correct. Because if not, our rocket may fly crooked if, if our parts are aligned up crooked. Or it may not fit correctly. So getting the exact right decimals typed in for the dimensions is very important for our rocket. Okay, so let's take a look here. And I wanted to show you guys, here's these four. Look at them on the screen. Here's what They're, they're made in digital world on this computer only. And then, of course, here they are after I printed them. So you can see those same four. Let's go back and forth. There they are. And here they are. And then I put, for size comparison, I put the original nose cone that came with it that everybody here has already made. Now, let's get this down out of the way right now. And um, the original nose cone for this, whoops, let's take a look in millimeters. Change of mode to millimeters. There it is. This thing I'm using is basically kind of like a digital ruler. It's called a digital caliper, though. So the one that comes with it is about 72 millimeters long. Okay, That's how much sticks up out of the rocket. So you know if you make one that's more than 72, it's going to be bigger or longer than this. If you make one less than 72, it's going to be shorter than this. Okay, Just as a frame of reference, that we want to know that first. And if you get done and you hate your nose cones, you can still use this original one and you don't have to use a 3D printed one. But I'd like everybody to make it. First of all, if you're in the club, before you do this video, you want to go back. And if you're in my class, you don't need to do this really. But you're going to want to go back. If you're in the club and you've never taken Mr. Wichick's class and you've never used Tinkercad, you need to go and do this assignment right here. It's called Tinkercad Account Setup and 5-Minute Video. It's going to teach you how to use your YSD7 account to set up a Tinkercad account. This video only takes two and a half minutes. The second one, it teaches you the basics of how Tinkercad works. This one takes about five minutes, and then you can play around with it, and then you'll be ready to do this video where we're actually building something with those skills. But first, you gotta set up your account, and you gotta kinda know how it works. If, like I said, if you've already taken Woodchick's class, you're already good enough for that, probably. Or if you've already done Tinkercad. But if not, this is what you're gonna have to watch first. Okay, now we got that out of the way, cool. So let's go through, and um, I'm going to move this to the side. And we're going to rebuild, and I'm going to go from scratch on how to build a, a simple nose cone. So what I'm going to do is, right now, I'm going to teach you how to build one that's a rounded tip nose cone um, and an O-Give. We're going to make a couple of them right now. The point is, there's one part that's the same on all of them, and you just change the top part. So let's build, let's build the bottom part. The part that's the same on all of them first, that's the first step, is going to be the part that goes inside of the rocket tube. Check it out. Watch this camera here. That's a little big. There we go. So here we have my rocket. Yours might look a little different on the fins. But this part that actually sticks into the tube has to be just the right size. Whoops, sorry. And if it's too loose, the air will come out and escape without blowing the nose cone off. That is catastrophic failure. We don't want that. If it's too tight, it will stay in and it won't go out even though the explosion and, and the tube will break. So we want to have something that's not... So it's got to be exact dimensions. Let's put it that way. But the part that's going to be the same on all of these nose cones is this piece at the bottom. This part right here. It has rings for, and a loop. And what is that for? Let's get these out of here. And remember how we glued in the shop cord? That's, we're not, I'm not going to tie it on yet, but that's where the shock cord runs through. Ugh, trying to get it in there. It takes a little while to do it, but there we go. See that? So this part down here, we don't see it on the rocket, so that's going to be the same for everyone, and it's got to be very, very exact. Okay, otherwise it's not going to fit right. Okay. So let's go ahead and make that part that's the same on all of these. Boom, boom, boom. All of them have the same thing. All right, cool. So let's go back to the screen. Let's get this out of the way. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to start Inkercad. No, sorry, it's Tinkercad. 
Cool. Create a new design. I'm going to name it Nose Cone Jeremy Woodchick. Okay, cool. So we got Nose Cone and Jeremy Woodchick. That's going to be important later because when you send me the files, it'll come out with this name on them. That's good. Okay, so first of all, we're going to build the part that's the same. And hey, 100% honesty from Mr. Woodchick. I'm going to be looking at the other one that I've already done as a cheat sheet. <laughs> so if you see me looking to the side, yes, I am cheating. <laughs> I'm, well, it's my work, so I'm not really copying it, am I? I don't think. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is that these things, if you notice them, they have to stick in the tube properly. So we want to taper the end of it. Notice how the end of it has that little part that's a little bit where it gets a little thinner and it gets tapered. Let's make that transition first. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab from Tinkercad. We're going to grab, and by the way, guys, just watch this. I'm going to put this video up and, and put it on the screen later, okay? And I'm going to put it and, and share this with you. So for right now, you can just watch, grab a bowl of popcorn and just watch it. Okay, so here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a cone. Here's my cone shape. Where's my cone? Where's my cone? There we go. Here it is. Now, I know it looks like this, but guess what you can do? If I take the top radius and make it much larger, larger than zero, zero means the cone comes to a point. Uh, no, we want the top to be bigger and the bottom to be smaller. So you can adjust these numbers in here. Don't, when you grab your cone, don't manipulate the height or anything of it yet. We're going to do all of that right here, okay? First of all, for the number of sides, I would like you to change the number of sides to 32. That won't do much, but it's kind of important, okay? And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust these things. So we're going to go the top radius. Oops. It's going to be... Just a second. Hold on. No, hold on. i got to get this right. Make sure we get it right. 17.95. Okay. So. Okay, so the top radius, we're going to put in 8.97. We would put 8.975, but it doesn't get that accurate, which is fine. Minus 0 0.5. So I'm going to put in the bottom radius is going to be 8.47. Okay, there it is. And the height of this thing. Well, we don't need it very high, or very tall. We just want it to be one. Okay, now look at it carefully. Turn off. This is very important. Switch to flat orthographic view. It's right over here. Okay, and then get a front view by clicking on the view cube. And now we can see that we have a little bit of an area where it gets a little bit thinner as it goes down. That's all we need. It's fine. Okay. All right, cool. So... check. I want to double check my calculations before we move on. Yep, that's good. Okay, so the next thing we need, if we look back, is we looked in our design. We had this little ring, and we have the shoulder for the nose cone. So let's do the shoulder simply because the shoulder is very easy, and we'll put the ring on after that. So the shoulder is just simply a cylinder. We're going to slide out a cylinder. Okay, cool. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the cylinder here. We're not going to adjust it up here. Um, sides, let's change the sides to 32. That just makes it more polygonish. I don't know if that's a word. Okay, and let's type in the dimensions very exactly. And it took me a while to figure these out, which one fit just right. But on my printer that I'm going to be printing it for you for, it's going to be, for this one, we're looking at 17.95. Enter. Click on the other one, 17.95. They have to be exactly the same. Otherwise, it's going to be an oval, not a circle, and it won't fit right. And look, one more thing. We've got the length and the width now right here if we click on these. And now we can adjust the height. Just a sec. We have a message in the chat. Oh, okay, cool. There we go. All right, so... We're going to go on to the next part here, and we have to change the height to 13. We don't need it to stick out too long. Just 13. A little more than a half of an inch. Now look, let's get the front view again, and what we're going to do is we're going to lift this one up. 
you, you can't lift it up in the sky unless you click this little arrow that's pointed up. And we're going to move it up one millimeter. See how now it's even with that? Cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to line these up exactly correct. Not with our eye, like, eh, close enough. No, it has to be exact. So we're gonna, what, here's how you do it. You sweep over both of them at the same time, or you can click on one, hold down shift and click on the other. But you can see now I'm grabbing both of them at once. And we're going to line them up. So what we do is we go up here to this tool that says align. Or you can press the L on the keyboard. See how it's telling you? The shortcut is L. And we're going to click that. Now hold on, people. You have to tell it which one you want to hold still. So one of them is going to move to one to the other one. So I'm going to just click on this one's going to hold still. Click that once. See how now all the things go? Now if I click off of it, I have to start all over. So be careful. Line it up. Click on the one you want to hold still. And then you're going to click the middle one. So for the top, you're going to click on the middle button. And for this one, you're going to click on the middle one. And that lines it up perfectly. Okay? If you don't believe me, look at the top view and see how those are grayed out. That means that it is aligned in that way. We do not want to align it vertically. It's already where it needs to be. It's exactly one millimeter. It's exactly on top of it with no gaps. Perfect. We're done. And by the way, this is the boring, crappy part that we're getting out of the way. The rest of it's more fun. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, and remember how we need that little loop? Remember how I ran earlier? We had that little loop that it goes through. Remember that? This little part where we can run this shock cord through, and we can loop that through there, and if it gets unstuck, get through there. You. It always takes me a while to do this, but it'll run through there. So we're going to make that little loop, and in Tinkercad, you can cut stuff out. That's awesome, right? For example, like I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you look on my screen, anything in Tinkercad that you leave and you instead of a color, you tell it to be a hole, it cuts stuff out. So if I put this right here, I don't think it's a good idea, but check it out. It would cut that box and we'd have a messed up Pac-Man. I'm going to delete that. I don't want that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make that little ring. And if you go down here, here it is. It's called a tube. I'm going to put out a tube. And please watch carefully for the correct numbers. For the radius, the radius is going to be 6.5. For the wall thickness, the wall thickness is going to be 3.5. Okay? And how many sides? 24 is fine, but 32 might be better. I don't know. You could do more than that. I'll go up to 32 because that's what we've been using. We don't care. It just makes it more of a smooth circle. And this one, you have to adjust the height. Now, this height for mine is going to be 5. So I'm going to squish this down on the top, grab this top button, and go down to 5. Look, if you don't know what I'm doing in here, guys, it's because you haven't watched the video on how to do Tinkercad. You'll understand it. It's not very hard. Just watch that 5-minute video. It'll show you. Okay, I'm going to change it to a hole. And then what I'm going to do is, look, that's not the right way. So let's go here and click the front view. That's not the right way at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the object, I'm going to grab the spinner, and I'm going to keep my mouse on the inside of this circle. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and look, if I keep my mouse on the inside, it stops and snaps at 90 degrees. That's where we want it exactly. Now you can see this is too far up. I'm going to lower it down until it's about halfway up on the, on the middle plane. Uh, it's not exact. That's fine. About like that. Okay. So it's going to cut this out, and now what I have to do is I have to grab all three of them, use the Align tool like we did before. I want this one to hold still, so I click on that, and I just do the same thing. Center it, and center it. So I guess we could have skipped that other step and just done it once, and now look what's going to happen. It's going to cut part of that loop out of there, and we're going to be able to run our cord right through there. And that's a big enough chunk of plastic to be strong. So I'm going to grab all three of those things at once all of them, and I'm going to make them into a group, and watch what happens. It cuts that loop out of the bottom of the nose cone, or the nose cone shoulder. This is called the shoulder, to be fair. Okay, so now, if you want to see what that really did, to, to look at it on the inside, please don't do this, but I'm just going to show you. I'm going to do what's called a cross-section analysis. And this is what you really just made. On the inside, if we could see it, you made and cut out a little loop in there. So when you go to run your thing through, it goes through and it feeds through there. 
I'm going to undo that. I don't want that. Delete. Bye-bye. Okay. So we're ready to go for the next part. Now double check. I'm going to ungroup it again and double check all my dimensions. 17.95, 17.95. Good. The middle part. Okay. 17.94. Okay. Close enough. Don't mess with that. 17.94 is less than a human hair width. It's way less than a human hair width. Close enough. Okay, good. And then this thing was fine. So I, I'm, I'm good to go on. Now, see, guys, this is the part we're going to keep. I'm going to put this to the side. And from now on, I'm not going to touch this again. I'm going to duplicate it if I want to make another one. So I want to make, I'm going to leave this alone because I can use it for other nose cones. And I'm going to click this button up here, which is duplicate or control D if you want to be a real pro. And I'm going to move it over. Be careful when you move it that you don't accidentally stretch it. And if you do, just click undo. Okay. Just a second, guys. I'm going to pause the recording. I'm going to go get a glass of water. If anybody has any questions, you can ask them now. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's put the fun part on, and that is the tips. So that's where things get interesting and where our nose cones all get different. So all of these things right here. Now listen, there's a lot of things you can do for this part. You're going to watch me as I go through and I'm going to, instead of giving it like a lot of time for each one, I just want to show you what's really the important part that's in common with all of them. And the best way to do that is for you to watch me go through and make three or four of these right in a row. And so this doesn't, once you get this part done, this is the most technical part. The rest of it's actually a lot easier. You just have to know how to use the align tool. Okay. So let's go through and I'm going to make four examples here. So I've got this part and this is going to be the same for all of them, but let's take um, the other ones. Now through some time, I've tried it out and what we really want to do is make sure we get the right diameter here. And this is going to be a different number than we used before. And what I found out that seemed to work really well on, on a lot of these was 18.85 matches so that when you put it in, this will actually match exactly with that side there. All right. So let's do that. So for real quick, let's do one right now. Let's say I wanted a sharp, pointy, simple cone. A lot of rockets look really good with those type of nose cones. So I'm going to drag out just the cone, just the good old fashioned cone. I don't know, maybe I'm going to make this and maybe it's going to look bad. I'm going to change it to 32 sides, first of all. And I'm going to change this to Mr. Wichick's magic number for the upper part is 18.85. Put it over here, 18.85. So now the length and the width of that, and that makes it, because both of them are, are equal, it's now, it's not an ellipse that's stretched, it's a perfect circle. And the original one was 72. I want to make one that's about the same length, but it's going to be a cone instead of an O give. There it is. Okay, cool. So now what I do, now let's think about this, guys. This was 13, and it had one millimeter underneath it, so I need to lift this one up in the air 14 millimeters exactly. Get yourself a, a front view, and see they put the arrow down here now. It could be at the top or bottom. It's down here, and I'm going to lift it up until that says 14. Exactly 14. And then you just take it, you grab them all, because this is all one piece now, because it's in a group. And you grab these two together, and we're going to align them. Um, let's keep this one still, and we're going to align middle and middle. And there it is. Now, watch what I did there. I want to show you something, right? Let's get a top view so you can watch the align tool in action. It's actually pretty cool. Grab them, align, hold still, middle. Let's try that again. Mr. Wichick's looking really bad on this video. Okay, apparently it doesn't work very well from a top view, but you can see what's happening is it just snaps it to be aligned in the middle. And if you look at the bottom, it's perfectly aligned as a circle. Uh, last step, grab it all and make another group. Now I have a nose cone. You could, you, this is ready to turn in. I'll show you how to do that in a second, okay? Let's make another one. Grab my original, duplicate the part that's the same for all of them. So now this one, I'm gonna show you how to make a nose cone shape that's very typical for rockets, and it is, it's the Ogive, Ogive, Ogive. People pronounce it differently, but here's where you find that. They actually have that one in here. We're going to go into shape generators. So what you do is, is this is the basic shapes. 
If you want to do anything else, you have to go into shape generators. They have some advanced stuff. Go down to Tinkercad and change it from basic shapes down to shape generators and go to all. And they have all kinds of stuff in here. Okay. And if you go to the bottom, there's many pages of things. See how there's all these different pages of things that people add? I think it's on page seven, if I remember now, but I don't know for sure. There it is. It is. It's on page seven. So we go to Shape Generators All, and you go to this one. I would use Tangent OGIV. That one's the best one to use for our rockets, because it will come tangent, which means straight with the side, and you'll get a nice smooth transition. Please don't make this 72 millimeters tall, because that's what you already have. You have a rounded off OGIV cone. So I'm going to make this, let's say I wanted to make it uh, much longer. And guys, there's a limit. Let's say no nose cones that stick out more than like 125. That's a very long one. And it's about as tall as I can print them without them falling over. So let's say I wanted to go 100 millimeters. Okay, cool. Got it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to elevate it how far? 14. So 13 plus 1 gives us 14 to put it on top. Exactly 14. You see that right there? Perfect. Done. And again, same process. Grab it. Align. Click the bottom to hold still. Center. Center. Do not align top and bottom. We want it where it is right here. Perfect. Group it. Done. Awesome. Next one. <clears throat> Let's do another one. Um, this one is going to be a multi-part nose cone. So it's going to start out as a cone, then there's going to be a cylinder that goes straight, and then it's going to do an O-give at the top. I don't know. I'm just playing with ideas. That's all. So, okay, cool. So let's do a multi-part one. Let's go back to basic shapes. Let's get our cone for the bottom. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I forgot. I screwed up on this last one, didn't I? I didn't put in the 18.85. That's really important. Don't forget to do that for your top shape. And because I did that, I do need to realign them, don't I? Sorry. Mr. Woodchick's a terrible person. Let's ungroup and realign those. I would say the most important part is, is it looks cool. <laughs> you know, the most important part is you get the right sizes and that it looks cool. Let's say that. Okay, so here's my cone. I'm going to go the base radius. I don't know if I can do 18.85. That may not let me. Oh, no, we're not going to do it that way. This one, I'm just going to do it this way. I'm just going to go 18.85. 18.85. And I'm going to lift it up 14. Yep. I'm going to align. By now, you're going to get good at the align tool. And it goes pretty quick. Okay, cool. I'm going to take a cylinder. And this one shouldn't be 18. I'm going to make it much less. So like 14 by 14. Cool. And let's elevate this up a little ways. Let's get a front view. And we'll align all of these together. And if you don't get what I'm doing, you will see it in a minute. That's terrible. But now it's lined up, so I can tell that this needs to go down a bit to line up correctly. There we go. That looks good. And at the top, I'm going to do, I'm going to put the OGIV from page 7 under all shape generators. So you can make combos of different things, many different. Dude, this is infinite. Like literally, you can just have, it's infinite how many combos of nose cones you could possibly make. Okay, so this one, I'm going to change it to 14 by 14, because that's going to go on the top. I don't know how tall that is. I could add it up, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to move this over. That looks good. Now I'm going to align all of these shapes. Middle, middle. Now we have another nose cone, don't we? Boom. Combine that one. The last type I wanted to show <clears throat> is one that adds features like a cockpit, like it looks like a pilot. Uh, rides inside your rocket. And then you can paint the cockpit a different color to make it look like glass or whatever. So you can make it like a blue so it has a glassy look to it, whereas the rest of your rocket might be black or red or whatever. So we're going to take a look at that. And if you look at my screen, you can see that I've done that on this one. And so this one has a cockpit built on it. 
Okay, so let's take a look. They're very easy to do. They're not very hard. You just um, you make it like any other nose cone, and then you put an, uh, a sphere on there. So let's go back to that. And I'm going to, for this one, oh, I didn't copy it first, did I? So now I've got to ungroup it and dig that piece out of there. Okay, there it is. Let's duplicate that, move it out, and regroup all of this. Guys, I really, because you have to print this, and if you screw up on it, it takes another week for me to get it back and print it. It's really important that you double check your dimensions and you're doing it right. Okay, so let's go here. And for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to basic shapes and I'm going to grab what's called the half sphere. See that? It's a half sphere. It's like a, it's like a soccer ball that got cut in half, kind of. And I'm going to stretch this way out to like, um, let's go about 70, I'm going to go about 80 millimeters. Okay. Now we know that this needs to be, since this is the bottom piece, it has to be 18.85 and 18.85. And I'll, I promise after this I'll be quiet and I'll be done because I know you guys are probably itching to get started on this. We're going to raise it up 14 millimeters just like all the rest. <clears throat> Grab it, align. We're going to line it up left and right center, top and bottom center. Good. And then that looks great. Double check. Yep. Got my dimensions right, 18.85, yep, I do. Okay, so now what I do is check this out. Now, to make that cockpit so it looks like the pilot sits in it, I grab a sphere and I take a top view. I'll move the sphere so it's kind of over here. And I'm only going to, I'm just going to adjust it by holding down shift. And if I don't hold down shift, it could get squished. So I'm going to hold down shift and adjust it so it is much smaller. I don't want it to be as wide as the cockpit, so let's say something like that. 10 by 10 was good, kind of. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to grab these two by holding down shift. I'm going to align them, but only in this way. I don't want to align it the other way, do I? So now it's right in the middle like that, but it's still not lined up like that. I don't want it to be because it would disappear. Okay, I'm going to stretch it out, make it much taller. I'm going to elevate it up. Oh, come on. I'm going to elevate it up over here. And now I'm going to move it with my arrow keys, with my left arrow key, until it goes in where I want it. And that's about where I want it, but I want to tilt it a little bit so it matches the curve. Slightly tilted, use my arrow key, left arrow key, again, again. And now that's right there. Double check that it got, is still lined up in the middle. There it is. So now you have a cockpit where a pilot could sit, for example. Now, is it possible you could do a multi-parter with a cockpit? Yes, and that's the best part about this. Dude, I only showed you four possibilities. Dude, there are a lot of ways that you can make your nose cone. Be careful, though. There's one way that will not work for our rocket unless you modify it heavily. Here's why. Check it out. I want to show you something on the camera. Before, you, before we get done, I know I've been blabbing for a long time. You guys have been a good audience. Look. You see how that, there's our, the rod, the launch rod has to go through that. We talked about that before. So if you have the, if it gets bigger up here, if the size of your nose cone increases at the top, the launch rod, if it increases on all sides, if it increases in one side, it's fine, but all sides can't increase because then the launch rod won't fit. Okay, does that make sense? So like, for example, if I used this one that I just made, this is going to work. Even though it gets bigger over here, we just make sure when we line it up that the launch rod is down here on the other side. But if it's bigger all the way around, it, it just will not work. Hey guys, I will print up to four nose cones for each kid. If you want to try out four of them and you can take four of them, go, these are good, these are good. Ah, that sucks. You can use whatever one you want, throw the rest away, or save them for another rocket you want to make in the future. So I'll, I'll do, like, like I said, from our club, I'll, do, I'll print up to four of them for you, okay? If you just want to make one, that's great. If you want to make two, great. Three, four. If you want to make five, talk to me. I might be able to do it, but yeah. All right, so that will do it. And um, to turn it in, what you need to do is you grab as many as you want to turn in. So look, make sure there's nothing else on here. You grab the ones you want to turn in, and it's really important. <clears throat> and actually, let's do this. I don't know if you can. Can you submit multiple files? I don't think you can. So what you need to do is make sure they're all even on this on this bottom plane. 
and move them close together, but don't overlap them. So get them like they can, this. They can submit them separately. Oh, they can? Yeah. You can do multiple file submissions? Yeah, there's a spot where it says add file and you just keep adding them until you get all the ones in there. Okay. So let's go through the export part and then I'll make another video after I get this video posted on how to turn them in. So here's what you do. You click the one you want to export. Make sure that it moves around in one group and it's not falling apart. And then you go to export and you go to the selected shape and then you go to STL. And you can see I have nose cone Jeremy Woodchick number one STL file. Okay. And if you look in here in my downloads, there it is. So there's my, my nose cone file right here in my download. And then the next one I export from the same one, I'm going to go to export, STL, selected shape only, and the STL. And it's going to show up with a one after it in my files. See that? No, you can't see that. Let's try it again. Yep, right here. See? One. Okay. And next week I will, and then um, in a future video that I'll make here soon, I will show you guys how to submit those on Canvas. Although you should probably figure it out by now. It's not too difficult. I just haven't got that set up yet. I have a video already done that we can use. Okay, cool. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for coming. And I'm going to stop.